Alright, okay, so hello dears. Ayan, hello, uh, good day, welcome, welcome to yet again another pre-recorded lecture in our class in clinical parasitology. And for this uh, pre-recorded lecture, what we're going to discuss now is our last topic and our yeah, we don't have a lab activity. We don't have a lab activity on this. More on lecture na lang. Um, and that is your immunoassays for human parasites. All right. So this is our last pre-recorded lecture in parasitology. No, it's quite sentimental, quite emotional. Din. <laughs> so we've reached this far, no. And I hope, I hope, I can only hope, talaga, that uh, you're able to learn something um, under me, no, from our class. Um, that's really my goal and you. I hope you retain something and that you will really learn uh, you learn something and that you will really remember this um, in the future, especially in our third year because again, some concepts um, will go back or will return in third year and in third shape, of course, and especially in the board exams. <laughs> because again, everything that I will I have discussed, you'll encounter once again in the board exams. Alright, so I hope I hope that you. Alright, okay, so for this um, last lecture, actually, I was, um, um, you know, having second thoughts if I will have um, lecture, a, a lecture on this or what, should I make a PowerPoint about this because most of the concepts here are for third year, no? <laughs> for your third year second sem, uh, the subject, which is immunology and serology, which is my other subject in this semester. Um, but yeah, with <laughs> after constant after some um, intense deliberation I decided to include that so that um, I will introduce some concepts no uh, so that once you um, reach third year second sem these concepts are already uh, they are not already new to you I mean like they were only this will only be a review na lang these concepts that I will uh, share okay that I will able to discuss now all right so and at the same time din naman, I have Immunocell or IS this sense, so might as well <laughs> just teach na lang this um, uh, in your class din naman. Alright, so uh, these are your immunoassays for human parasites. Okay, alright, now so for a short introduction, your immunoassays no, are based okay, on the concept of antigens and antibodies. Alright, so what are first antigens and antibodies? Antigens is are substances that stimulate your body for antibody formation and they have the ability to bind on antibodies. So basically your antigens is, uh, think of it as something that's not, um, no, not necessarily. Antigens is uh, usually proteins, could be carbohydrates or whatever. These are substances that can um, trigger your body to produce an antibody, okay? That's um, a rough de definition now, okay? But in third year, you will understand that there's a different uh, description for antigen, okay? <laughs> All right, but for now, for our class in parasitology, uh, we'll just leave it that way. Your antigens are your um, substances, okay, that can elicit, okay, or that can trigger your body to produce an antibody, okay. So an antibody is the partner to an antigen. Your antibodies are the specific proteins produced by your immune system, produced by your body, uh, which are secreted in your blood and even uh, and, and even in other body fluids to counter attack, you no, know, to counter attack your antigens. Okay, so basically. Your antibodies are the body's immune response, okay? The body's response to these antigens, okay? Because these antigens usually are the ones that can cause disease, okay? But antigens are not only coming from um, other sources or pathogens or antigens that can come from uh, your bacteria or what are other pathogens, okay? Because um, in the body itself, in your body itself, we have also what we call self antigens, okay? These are antigens that are found in the, on the surfaces of our cells, but under normal circumstances, these antigens do not okay, cause any immune response or it does not cause uh, or it does not trigger the body to produce an immune, system, uh, an immune response or antibodies. Okay? That, those are your self antigens. A very good example are your ABO antigens for your blood typing. Okay? So you, have, um, you have the A antigen, the B antigen, the D antigen for your RH. Uh, blood group system, right? So these are self antigens, antigens that are normally found in your body, but they do not cause or they do not uh, result to antibody formation in your own body. Okay, all right. So your antigens, broad um, definition. Okay, but for our class, we'll just settle with um, substances that usually cause disease. All right, or substances uh, found um, structures, rather structures or substances 
that are found or that are produced by your pathogens. Example, bacteria or parasites in this case. All right? So antigens and antibodies. So antibodies are the response of uh, the body against the antigens. Okay? All right. So immunoassays, no, what we're going to, to talk about in this pre-recorded lecture, they utilize no, or they uh, exploit in a way that ability of antigen and antibody combination. All right? Okay. And these amino acids, again, are bio bioanalytical methods in which the quantitation of the analyte depends, again, on the action of the antigen and the antibody. So it would depend um, on your amino acid, what you want to detect. In your third year, you will know that you can detect an antibody, okay? You can detect an antigen, depending on the test system. You can even, you can even detect both, okay? Antigen and antibody, all right? So it would depend on the amino acid, it would depend on the amino acid on what it is used for and what are the substances or analytes that these amino acids are tested for. Okay? Alright. So that's an introduction. Alright. Uh, before I forget the ideas, you know, there are some slides here that I got from um, my idol chart. From one of the greatest teachers that I ever had and one of the inspirations that I look up to uh, from Sir Jem Wu um, he is He has been a laboratory instructor for the longest time. He was my teacher. Also, during my third year, um, uh, both in bacteriology and immunology and, ser immunology and serology, uh, his handouts are what I used when I was a third year and what I also uh, gave to my students <laughs> in my classes. Uh, last sem in Bacte and this sem also in IMS because again, his handouts are the best, like the best talaga. It can really help you understand the concepts more. So I asked permission from him and then I that's why I was able to uh, let my students use it now. Because again, you know, I really want to share his handouts and his brilliance talaga ang galing. Uh, Sir Jack is also a top notcher, top 6 of 2014. Okay, and he is a medical student now. So, one of my idols talaga, my inspiration the best. Okay, and some slides here are from his presentation in Immunology and Serology. Okay, so um, all credits go to him. Okay, tanan uh, tanan ihan yun. Because again, he uh, took the time and effort talaga to really be uh, meticulous and to really produce uh, powerful presentations that are of high caliber talaga. So, as in, if you will be my student in bacteriology next sem, if I will still be here, yes, <laughs> you will encounter the handouts of Sir Jeff, which again, uh, my lifesaver, <laughs> one of my lifesavers when I was a third year. Alright, anyway, I answer that with Chica. And this is uh, one of the slides that um, I got from his uh, presentation. So this is an example of an antigen and antibody reaction. So this is your antibody, of course. So start with the antigen. And of course, this is your antibody. So basically, again, in our definition, antigen, rough definition lang ha, uh, superficial definition lang. The antigen is again our pathogen, okay? Or the one that's causing the disease. But again, in your third year, you will get to know, you will get to understand that there are a lot more antigens. And they're not only really limited to those that can cause disease, okay? Uh, again, as I mentioned, self-antigens found in your body, okay? Uh, that's, those are normally uh, occurring in your body, okay? But again, for the sake of our discussion in parasitology so that you won't, you won't be confused, antigens in this uh, situation or in this context are those that can cause disease. In this example, this is your parasite, okay? Now, in the parasite's body example, there are some uh, receptors, okay, or uh, protein structures, okay, which are also the antigens, okay, and these are now the antigens that will bind to your antibody. Now, this antibody is specific to this particular antigen, okay, so this one antibody is targeting this antigen. Another antibody is also targeting this uh, antigen, so it's very specific, okay, so basically that's the goal in our vaccination, no? when it, uh, in our vaccines, especially now that uh, discussion about the vaccines have been or has been uh, predominant or prevalent because of COVID-19. No, so for most of the vaccines of COVID-19, they are aiming in the production of the spike protein, example, protein at the surface of the virus. Okay, so most of the vaccines for COVID-19 are focusing on that. No, it, so that the body will produce a spike protein of the virus. Okay, so that the antibodies in your body. Okay. Or your immune system will identify the spike protein and then produce antibodies against the spike protein. So that when you encounter the real virus, okay, when you encounter the real virus with the real spike protein, you get uh, the antibodies can now attack immediately against those uh, virus or virions. Okay, so basically that's it. <laughs> okay, that's the goal of vaccination. So produce antibodies. All right. So again, these are specific 
Okay, one antibody specific for this particular antigen. Okay, now for your antibodies, diba, I don't know if you already know, but we have five different antibodies. You have uh, IgG, you have IgM, you have IgA, you have IgD, and lastly you have IgE. Okay, now IG means uh, immunoglobulin. Okay, so that's the other name of your antibodies, immunoglobulin. All right, IG. Now the GMADE, um, the meaning of that are it's um, based on a letter, Greek letter. So for G, that's gamma. M for mu, A for alpha, D for delta, and E for epsilon. Okay. Now these um, Greek letters, magod, or these letters are part of the structure of the antibody. Okay. So. Again, you'll know that in your third year <laughs> later. I will not dwell no further because that's ISN. But just take note that again, the letters there, G, M, A, D, E, it corresponds to a structure in the antibody. Okay, and each antibody has a specific structure and it's denoted by the letter depending again on the antibody. So for IgG, it has a gamma structure. For M, it has a, uh, for IgM, it has a mu. For IgA, it's alpha, etc., etc. Okay, so it's specific. It confers specificity and uniqueness to each antibodies. All right. Okay, now for IgG, okay, IgG is considered to be the most abundant, oh, press the buzzer, most abundant concept, uh, antibody in the uh, in the body, okay? And it's usually uh, the antibody that uh, will give you a lifetime protection or uh, it will give you immunity, okay? All right. For IgM, it's usually the antibody that increases first, siya ang mauuna, mauuna. So, siya ang first antibody to increase in primary infection, okay? Like first infection pala. So, if you just encounter an infection, newly uh, encountered infection, then it's the first antibody to rise, okay? It's IgM. Alright, now for IgA, is the antibody that is usually found in secretions, okay? Secretions. Ayan, so, ako ni Monica Ana is Misaya Duga, <laughs> A, I, G, A. So, it's example, these are the antibodies found in your sweat, your tears, and of course, the first milk of a lactating mother, colostrum. Okay, that's why it's very good if you have, like, babies, but if you have babies, or if you have infants at home, uh, for, to be, for them to be breastfed. Because again, the... Uh, breast milk of your mothers and mothers really are very uh, full of nutrients. Okay, they're full of nutrients, especially antibodies, and in the form of IgA. Okay, because again, the immune system, especially that the newborn's immune system, are still developing. It's still um, weak. Okay, so they get their protection. One of the ways to get their protection, or they get their protection. Uh, one of the ways <laughs> in which they get their protection from is from the breast milk of the mother. Okay, from IgA and the milk, ayan, and the colostrum. Okay, alright, IgD is um, is used for uh, B cell maturation, okay, which is a type of your lymphocyte. And IgE usually it's increased in allergies, allergy and parasites, or parasitic infection. And this is what we are after, the IgE usually, for parasitology. Because usually, in the blood smear or in the laboratory results of a patient, if this is increased, okay, increased IgE together with increased what WBC? What do you think? Increased what kind of WBC? Increased eosinophils, again. They usually point to a parasitic infection or an allergic reaction. Okay? Alright. But most of the time, if we're talking about parasitology for parasites, we're, we're looking at IgE and um, eosinophils. Okay? Alright. Yeah. So those are basically a rough description of your antibodies, the different types of antibodies. In your third year, again, in immunology and serology, you will, you will devote okay, whole a whole semester, okay, second semester, for the uh, discussion no? and the lessons on the different antigens and antibodies and their reactions and immunoassays pag yun. So, more to come in your third year. Okay, all right. Now, your, all of your antibodies are produced okay, Okay, so if a question, what cell produces your antibodies? Your antibodies are produced by, of course, your plasma cells. 
And plasma cells are a form of B cells. Ayan. So your B cells are really the one that produce your antibodies in the form of plasma cells. Your plasma cells is a mature form or differentiated form of B cells. Okay. So plasma cells talaga are nagwili sa antibodies. Okay? And plasma cells are a type of B cells. Alright, okay. Ayan, now last, para ang daming chika no, second slide ko. <laughs> A third slide. Anyway, so uh, for the slide, uh, for this slide, the part that the antibody uses, no, for binding, is known as the valence. Alright? And the part in the antigen that binds to the antibody is known as the epitope. Alright? Or the determinant, determinant site. Okay, so this is the part of the antigen, part of antigen that binds to your antibody. Okay, and the part of the antibody that binds to your antigen is the valence. All right, okay. please think. I am. So basically, that's the introduction. So we utilize that, um, you know, uh, principle or procedure in a way, ilahang reaction, so that we get to uh, develop more immune assays and the detection of your. Um, Infections. Okay. All right. Now we go into the major bulk of our discussion, the serodiagnosis. Uh, as mentioned in our, you know, first lectures, palang parasitic diagnosis. No, in this case, um, diagnosis of parasitic infections are usually done in two ways. Number one is of course the direct demonstration of the parasites itself or themselves in the clinical samples, which is again the major bulk of parasitology laboratory. Diba? The different methods on the identifying of your parasites. Uh, from the different clinical samples, so stools of blood, diba? from direct fecal smears to your uh, thick and thin smears in blood. So all of these methods, they are uh, focused no, on detecting the parasites in the clinical samples themselves. All right? So really looking, uh, really examining the clinical samples if those clinical samples have the parasites. All right? But in certain scenarios in which we cannot see any more parasites in our clinical samples, but the patient is presenting symptoms that is pointing or that are pointing to a parasitic infection, we then go to the second method of diagnosis of parasitic infections, and that is through serology, all right? Or the detection of either antigens of the parasites or antibodies of the patient against the parasites, okay? All right, again. So, um, again, in, in, in success with demonstration of the parasite in your tissue samples or clinical samples is not possible, we go now to serology or serological testing. Serological based assays, as I mentioned, two types then, either detecting antigens of the parasites in the patient's body, all right, or detecting the antibodies of the patient against the parasite. So you're detecting now the immune response of the patient against the parasite. All right, okay. And most of these methods usually are based on the antibody detection. So we're looking for antibody detection, which could indicate that the patient has experienced or is currently experiencing a parasitic infection because the patient has an antibody okay, to, to this particular parasite. Because this could indicate again that the, the patient is experiencing an infection. Okay, can produce man yung antibodies you have body. Okay? Or, again. Now, the problem with antibody detection lang is the persistence of your antibody for months or years, as mentioned, because they're usually for um, protection of a long time immunity. Um, and so acute infection cannot be differentiated from chronic. So when you say acute, it's the infection that's happening now. And chronic is the infection that has been happening for a long period of time now. All right? So there is a, in a way, um, there is a difficulty if you're looking for antibody. Because again, your antibody uh, detection, uh, your antibodies persist for a lifetime. Right? Example, IgG. It, it protects you for a long time, right? immunity. So you cannot say na ah, okay, this is an acute infection, this is a chronic infection, all right? Uh, because again, you can differentiate that through the identification of the parasite in the clinical samples. Because if you see that uh, your clinical samples have the parasite eggs, for example, the parasitic cysts or trophozoites, then you can say that this is an acute infection because it's happening now. The parasites are actively producing the ova or the cysts, all right? But if you don't see it, no, but if you don't see it, you only rely on antibody detection, then there could be a difficulty in differentiating with, between acute and chronic infection. Okay, all right. Now, serological assays, very helpful, especially if the parasite is not demonstrated easily in your sample. Example, toxoplasmosis, positive agent, or toxoplasmosis caused by toxoplasma gondii, all right? So, 
So those are some of the usefulness, no? so some of the applications of your serology in parasitology. Okay? So um, when you say again serology, it's testing your serum. Okay? It's testing the serum of the patient again for antigens for the parasites for antibodies against the parasites. All right. Okay. Now we're going to um, the usefulness of serology for parasitic diseases. This is a table coming from a book in third year, uh, immunology serology book, uh, Stevens, okay, one of the best friends, <laughs> one of the easiest, easier books to read than in uh, third year because Medjo Kelly lang siya. Okay, alright. So this is uh, a book. As you can see, you have serology indicated. You have serology may be useful and serology not indicated. So for the first uh, column, it means that um, for these diseases, serology is best performed, okay? Or serology can be of great help. Because again, as you can see, these are diseases that can be quite difficult, no? That can be uh, yeah, quite difficult to identify in your clinical samples. Um, especially, example, um, you have amoebiasis extra-intestinal, meaning you don't see any more cysts or trophozoids in your intestine, in your school samples, okay? And then toxoplasmosis, as mentioned, schistosomiasis um, when eggs cannot be demonstrated. So, of course, um, you then go to serology, right? That's our uh, next step. If we cannot see the parasites in your clinical samples, but the patient is presenting symptoms or is having symptoms related to a parasitic infection, we then go to serology. Okay. For the second column, serology may be useful, may or may be useful. So meaning, um, it's not totally used routinely for diagnosis, but it can be of great help. Okay. And last uh, column, serology not indicated. Um, <laughs> serology is of no help or it's not that helpful. As you can see, these are diseases that can really be seen, okay? Or the parasites can be seen in your samples easily. So example, as ascariasis, the eggs, capillari ca capillariasis, hookworm, chagariasis, and malaria. So these are some of the um, parasites or parasitic infections that can be easily demonstrated in clinical samples. Hence, your serology uh, may not be indicated or may not be performed now. Okay, all right, so that's uh, the table. Okay, that's again from a third year book, your third year book, uh, Immunology, Serology, and Stevens. Okay, all right, now for uh, the next video, we'll start now with your different uh, immunoassays. So uh, these are the different immunoassays uh, that we're going to discuss <laughs> again. Uh, majority of these, uh, all of them actually, are topics uh, in Immunology, and Serology, and third year. All right, and we're going to I'm, I'm going to discuss siguro slowly lang of each and then try to uh, let you understand. Okay, kaysa naman I'll just give you descriptions or definitions and then you don't understand, diba? So <laughs> again, these are the topics. Uh, most of these concepts are for third year like immunology and serology. But for our class, na lang, um, you don't have any other choice. I'm your teacher, na pabibo. So <laughs> I will explain. Uh, in a way, siguro superficial lang, kinagmay lang. Alright? Okay, so we'll start first with the complement fixation technique. The first immunoassay for human parasites in our next video. So I'll see you on the next video.